Doing an example here in electrostatics where there are two conducting objects separated by five centimeters. We have uh, no knowledge of the individual charge values Q1 and Q2, but we know that they're repelling each other and the force of uh, repelling is 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. This is a situation that's appropriate for using Coulomb's force law and the R here is the distance from center to center of the two objects. Uh, these are very very small conducting objects so we'll ignore any physical size that they have. And eventually we're going to want to know the values of Q1 and Q2. Well two unknowns in one equation we need some more information. So we're given some more information. Someone comes in with an uh, insulated glove and picks up one of the charges and makes that object touch uh, the other object um, and then places it back down five centimeters away. Anchors it down. What uh, won't, We'll ignore how they stay in place. Uh, this is not motion of objects, this is electrostatic, so the charges are staying in one position. Uh, but now they repel with a stronger force, 7 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. Um, we are to now calculate the value of the charge after the two objects have touched, calculate the value of the net charge on each object, and then go back and calculate Q1 and Q2. So here we have uh, you know, our force law, and from this you can multiply 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 by 0.05 meters squared. Notice we've changed centimeters to meters. That's required to use this constant of 9 times 10 to the ninth. Um, so if you would run that, and you should repeat all these calculations on your own, uh, but Q1 times Q2 just solving for the quantity Q1 times Q2 and I came up with 1.806 times 10 to the minus 18. Now in the next situation the two objects touch each other and then separate we're going to have a charge Q3 on each object. When these metal objects touch they share their charge and same size uh, object so they'll have the same amount of charge on each object. I'll call that Q3 and we know the um, amount of force is now uh, 7 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. That's our 9 times 10 to the ninth. Q3 times Q3 I'll be squaring that symbol uh, and 0.05 squared again. So again repelling, so these objects have the same charge. I'm going to assume that they're positive charges. Um, sort of a minor tangent point to this discussion. So I have a plus here. A plus times a plus gives a plus. And we have, uh, although a negative times a negative would also give a plus, but let's move on. And then uh, the same sign charge, obviously, if they're the same charge, Q3. So again, we have a plus for that force. And I can evaluate Q3 squared. 7 times 10 to the minus 6 times 0.05 squared divide by 9 times 10 to the ninth. And this is Q3 squared. And I come up with 1.944 times 10 to the minus 18. Well, you may think we're not making much ground here because uh, now I have three unknowns listed here, uh, but they're not independent. They're not independent. If When these objects touch, I have a charge value of 2 times Q3. That's the Q3 plus the Q3. That came from Q1 plus Q2. So now we have three equations and three unknowns. I'm going to solve this by the method of substitution. I can take a square root here and come up with a value of Q3. And I'll go ahead and write that, what I came up with. Again, you should check all these numbers on your own calculator, but Q3 I have 1.394 times 10 to the minus 9 Coulombs. When I double that, I'll have 2.789 
and this is a rounded version of what I might had on my calculator. So 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9. And I'm going to subtract Q2 symbol equals Q1. And I'm about to substitute out the Q1 number up here and solve then for Q2. Uh, so su substitute out the Q1 symbol. So in doing that, let's go ahead and do that. So uh, we would have, and actually where I'm substituting it in is, is right here. So 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs minus Q2 times Q2 now I'm just substituting for Q1 up here the quantity that's equivalent to Q1 and that's equal to still 1.806 times 10 to the minus 18 now we distribute Q2 through the parentheses so this number times Q2 minus Q2 squared would be on the left side and I guess I'll go ahead and show that. Minus Q2 squared equals 1.806 times 10 to the minus 18. And now I want to convert this quadratic equation to a more standard form. I prefer to have the coefficient in front of the squared uh, variable as a positive. So I'm going to add Q2 squared to both sides. I'm going to subtract 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9 Q2 from both sides. And that will generate quadratic in a little bit more standard form. Q2 squared minus 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9 Q2 plus 1.806 times 10 to the minus 18. A quadratic equation, I'm not going to try to factor this to solve it. Instead, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So mathematics tells us when we have this quadratic formula, I can come up with a solution by placing a negative sign in front of the B coefficient. The A coefficient is 1. The B coefficient includes the sign here, so it's minus 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9. And C includes the sign, plus 1.806, 10 to the minus 18. So minus B, I'll have a minus sign in here, 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9. Then plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC. So this B squared minus 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9 squared minus 4. The A coefficient is a 1 in front of the uh, Q2 squared. And then C is 1.806 times 10 to the minus 18. All that's under the radical. And then we have to divide by 2 times the value of A. Again, the coefficient in front of the uh, squared term. So <coughs> start this by working what's called the discriminant, the quantity underneath the square root. And when you do that, um, just under the square root, I'm going to write this separate calculation. Under the square root, I came up with 5.537 times 10 to the minus 19. Then I take a square root and let's go ahead and we're going to replace this uh, square root expression with this value of the square root of this number. Minus and a minus here so I have a positive term 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9 plus or minus square root of this number is 7.447 times 10 to the minus 10 all over 2. So I'm going to evaluate this first using the plus sign and I come up Q2 2.789 10 to the minus 9 plus 7.447 10 to the minus 10 get that number then divide by 2 and I came up with 1.767 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs
I know we're in coulombs because I've used standard metric units all the way here with meters and uh, the 9 times 10 to the 9th, the standard constant, the newtons for the force number. So I'm in standard units and I'll have coulombs for the force. So that's Q2. And now we can find Q1. Q1 is 2.789 times 10 to the minus 9 minus Q2. So replace the Q2 up here with the number we've just uh, achieved from the quadratic formula. And I get a Q1 value of 1.022 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. That's one calculation of the quadratic using quadratic formula. Now I'm going to use the minus sign in front of the 7.447 10 to the minus 10. And when I do that, this number minus this number, then divide by 2. And you probably are not going to be surprised by this. I get 1.022, and again, you should repeat that calculation, but observe, that's what we had for Q1. But now we have Q2, and again, not a surprise also. If I take this number up here now and subtract it from 2.789, I get Q1 of uh, 1.767 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. So the Q3 number, um, 1.394, 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. You know, what were we asked to calculate? We are asked to calculate this number. And the Q1 and Q2, it doesn't matter which uh, pair you use. I'll use the ones up here. Labeling Q2 and Q1. <coughs> And that satisfies the uh, rest of the uh, what we were supposed to calculate for the problem. The other thing that you should do, perhaps, is put these numbers back in for Q1 and Q2 up here and work out the right side. See if you come up with 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, that would be a check that you were on the right track. But that's the method of... Uh, Solving a situation where we have some unknown charges with a known force of repelling. We touch and we have a different force of repelling now. We can use method of substitution and quadratic equation and come up with an answer for the uh, values of the charges. So keep practicing. Ask your instructor if you have questions about this.